Welcome to Ed News Ticker for Friday, April 27th. Today we talk about Mathalicious, we talk about Corskit, now Lore, uh, Evernote, Rosetta Stone, and more language software, adaptive learning, bankruptcy, and its failure for our students. Uh, Ted, Ed, you name it. We've got it here on ENT number five. Thanks for joining us. for Friday, April 27, 2012. The Ed News Ticker is brought to you by Imagine K-12. Imagine K-12, the Silicon Valley incubator for ed tech companies, will start its summer 2012 program in July, and the application is currently open, is due on May 4. Visit imagineK12.com slash apply for more information. Welcome to ENT. My name is Kirsten Winkler. And I'm Christopher Dawson. And our first story today is on Mathalicious. They are launching a Kickstarter project called Math52. Math52 is meant to create a short video exploring a unique application of math in everyday life uh, every week a day, uh, every week for one year. Uh, episodes will include how far do you have to run to burn off a Big Mac? Do people with small feet pay too much for shoes? Is it ever a good idea to buy Apple Care? Probably not. And what is this? The, what can this tell us about health insurance? Each Math 52 video will be accompanied by a lesson to help teachers recreate the conversation with their students. And with your help, uh, they can put teachers in a position to teach more effectively while engaging their students to become smarter, healthier, and more curious. So you can check that out over on Kickstarter. I think that could actually be quite uh, interesting for many students, uh, maybe even teachers to have this real-life connection. So, uh, I mean, a Kickstarter project, we don't know yet very much, but uh, yeah. I kind of like the idea. Well, it's, of course, that's why it's a story today. But <laughs> 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 All right. News from CourseKit. Um, CourseKit No More, it's, it changes its name to Lore. Uh, you can read that on their website according to the nicely animated explanation over there. The change reflects how students and educators use the platform and it, didn't, it is not so much at least anymore about courses, it's about building communities and sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, can only say uh, that for non-native English speakers, lore, I mean it's, it's a nice short name but uh, you don't have uh, I would say the immediate connection to what they do. So it, for me, it was a little bit complicated. I mean, when you read how they explain it, you you get it, but um, don't. Yeah, I, I I the the connotation even for a native English speaker of, of lore is uh, it, it's just a, a bit of a strange association. Uh, again, they did a nice, uh, very nice flash animation of uh, of what they mean, but. Uh, exactly. we'll, we'll see. I mean, course, course gets a, actually a, a pretty neat platform anyway. Mm -hmm. I think they're on the right track. Certainly, uh, you know, this is about uh, new. We don't need just another LMS. We need communities. So, That's it, but uh, uh, four-digit name is of course good. So, uh, if people <laughs> get it in Brand the, uh, in their heads, yeah. So. Branding 101 here. <laughs> so, um, Evernote though, uh, they're raising another uh, between 50 and 100 million dollars uh, to look at, at uh, near a 1 billion dollar valuation. Uh, the cloud note and storage app Evernote is raising a massive fifth round of funding for between 50 and 100 million uh, to a valuation that tops 1 billion dollars, according to multiple sources close to the company. To date, Evernote has raised 95. Point five million from Angels and its Series A through D rounds, the latest of which was a fifty million dollars Series D in July. That's mm -hmm. on tech. So um, one billion, not more than um, a little photo sharing app. <laughs> I know, I know, and then, this is Evernote. Uh. Yeah, and a lot of funding. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. News from uh, Rosetta Stone. Uh, they launch uh, a new language uh, learning solution for the K-12 market. Rosetta Stone's classroom programs have been used by more than 20,000 schools. Rosetta Stone's newest uh, educational solution to Tally Pro combines, combines interactive software with live online coaches who are native speakers, online educational games and activities, mobile apps for tablets and smartphones, adaptable administrative tools, and uh, proactive support services. The new solution was designed by, uh, with a high degree of flexibility and scalability to accommodate programs focusing on English language learners and foreign languages, whether in an individual classroom, a district, or an entire state, reports MarketWatch. 
Nice, nice to see them moving Enterprise mm-hmm. wide. Oh. Uh, so, uh, speaking of Rosetta Stone, uh, they have now acquired a kid-focused language learning startup called GoGoLingo. Rosetta Stone announced the acquisition of Los Angeles-based language learning startup GoGoLingo, uh, which was founded back in 2008 by uh, Afsun Yazdian, who, who developed GoGoLingo's proprietary playful immersion method while at Stanford. Uh, it's a language learning method designed to help kids ages 3 to 7 learn Spanish through implicit absorption. Uh, Rosetta Stone's acquisition of Google Lingo gives it access to the startup's characters, games, activities, and its digital infrastructure, uh, which the company plans to incorporate into assets of its future language learning solutions, according to a statement. Uh, the terms of the deal were not disclosed, but mm-hmm. it's uh, over on TechCrunch. Yeah, so we don't know, but uh, of course, for a startup uh, of about four years, um, that's not bad, having an exit. And on the Rosetta Stone side, uh, previously never been a big uh, company to acquire uh, companies, but now with a CEO, uh, they go into the buying game as well. So hopefully that that turns out uh, a good decision for them. All right, the next story also comes from TechCrunch, a TechCrunch heavy episode today. Social collaboration platform for students, Vigio, hits 1 million users and launches a paid version. Hmm. Vigio has been uh, slowly and steadily growing its user base and now reaches over 2,000 universities and 120,000 students groups around the world with more than 1 million users. Founder and CEO Dana Lambert describes Vigio as the anti-SharePoint. Hmm. Always a good positioning and clear positioning at least. Um, <laughs> therefore, Vigio's focus group are fourth grade students in the Boston area. Mm-hmm. If they can figure out a new venture, then it's ready to go. Uh, if they get focused, uh, if they get confused, sorry, then uh, Vigio makes adjustments until it's easier to use. Uh, Vigio raised 2.1 million in spring 2010. I love the idea of, of adaptive learning for a social network. I, if you're going to roll this up to kids, it's a nice way to build digital literacy. So mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, uh, but uh, paid version is not, not so bad either. So, uh, so this is one that's near and dear to my heart as I send off my student loan payment today. Uh, even after bankruptcy, students are trapped by student debt. So virtually any other kind of debt, uh, particularly here in the States, including medical bills, mortgages, credit cards, car loans, even gambling losses, uh, can be discharged in bankruptcy, uh, allowing the honest but unlucky a chance to restore their footing through an arduous restructuring overseen by a court. Uh, and uh, But under 2005 law passed by Congress to protect lenders, private student loans fall under the same nearly impossible to clear category as child support payments and criminal fines. Uh, there's certainly movement in Congress now to to see uh, you know, students be able to declare bankruptcy and wipe exactly. out uh, vast yeah. student loans. Exactly. And, uh, if you have uh, these, these other options, even for gambling, uh, you should have it for uh, I mean, student loans. For overwhelming so. student debt, right. Yeah. And when we have students you know, who are walking away with 100000 200000 dollars in debt and uh, you know can't can't possibly do anything about it and forgiveness programs are, are sort of few and far between especially with private loans mm-hmm. uh, I, I imagine though that our, our much beloved banking industry here is going to push back on this one a little bit oh, absolutely I yeah. see that some uh, heavy lobbying on the horizon as well yeah <laughs> All right, um, news from uh, the TED-Ed platform. Uh, TED-Ed is designed to enable teachers to create unique lesson plans around its video content. And uh, as TED's curator Chris Anderson wrote in March, the platform is uh, not meant to build an exhaustive online university with uh, entire curricula. Uh, on video, TED Ed aims to harness the talent of the best teachers around the globe by giving them tools that spark and facilitate learning. The new site, which uh, launches in beta, uh, will initially only contain a few dozen uh, videos and is really intended to illust- uh, for illustrative purposes, says TED Ed uh, catalyst Logan Smalley. And uh, if you want to read more, uh, just go over to TechCrunch. TechCrunch, uh, not surprisingly, right? Yeah. TechCrunch day on on uh, on, on ENT. ENT. So then, in a counterpoint of that, though, uh, Shelley Blake Block, who, who's always interesting to read, um, it writes over on Tech on Teach Paperless uh, the problem with TED Ed. Uh, you know, so the problem with TED Ed is the lack of doing. Uh, TED, in the form it's presented online to the masses, is not about doing; it's about watching, listening, consuming. 
sort of the, the opposite of what we're trying to do with our students. Uh, maybe leaving a comment or sharing a link to improve your TED cred score. Um, he thinks that we desperately need a platform, though, that exists to help us learn lessons by doing, and asks if TED Ed can evolve into that, or MITx, or any of the current rage of uh, the, the massive online uh, yeah, communities, MOOCs. Um, that's over on Teach Paperless. Uh, worth your read there. And uh, that's true. I uh, When I first heard about that, uh, I agree reading an article um, with the headline um, uh, TED Ed turning uh, education videos into Hollywood. So uh, it's definitely about um, nicely made videos, definitely professionally made, uh, but focused on watching rather than doing. But uh, we will see. I think uh, I heard that they have the approach to get people more into uh, doing something uh, about video and maybe even uh, producing them. At least producing, mm. right. right. Yeah. All right. Um, then... Uh, a new um, or another story from uh, inside of uh, Harvard's business school. Um, they start uh, a startup boot camp with three thousand of uh, dollars of seed capital from Harvard Business School. Around uh, one hundred and fifty MBA teams were tasked with developing their own. Um, Micro businesses in short uh, order. The startup uh, exercise is part of a new year long course for its first year students layered on uh, top of Harvard's required core of 10 courses. The only guidelines set by Harvard were that there could be no companies that created or sold weapons, pornography, alcohol, or tobacco, and none uh, offering financial advice. So, so otherwise, they can create their very own startup. <laughs> very good, yeah, especially the financial advice, probably, from the, from the freshman. Mm -hmm. uh, makes sense. Makes uh, so, sense. <laughs> so we're seeing uh, now, next story, uh, there's heavy editing on the part of textbook publishers. So the Senate Education Committee approved two more bills aimed at lowering the cost of textbooks from elementary school through college and moving them more quickly into the ebook uh, era. In all, seven bills dealing with textbooks are making their way through legislature. We'll see how far they make it in our largely deadlocked Congress here in the States. Uh, but publishers would have to provide in one place information on the differences between editions, how much the books cost in all their forms from hardcover to paperback, and a list of other texts on the same subject and their prices. So uh, I think it's a, a clearinghouse of sorts. That's over on, uh, on uh, Top Ed uh, SVE Foundation. And we have uh, an interesting story uh, you can read on tomorrow.org in our research and study section. And um, it deals with the interest in math and science careers and um, uh, that basically sparked in classes where uh, learning is di directed by student and supported by technology. So uh, nearly one third of high school students who experience math and science uh, classroom where instruction is led by by teachers, learning is directed by students, and where technology is used to support both express a strong interest in a STEM, so the science, uh, technology, engineering, and math uh, career, according to the latest findings from the 2011 uh, Speak Up survey. Nationally, uh, just 9% of students described their most recent uh, math or science class this way. And uh, Another percentage, only 20% of students in traditional classrooms where the instru instruction is teacher-directed and the use of technology is limited express the same interest in STEM careers. Oh, yeah, well, yeah STEM is all about the discovery. So, yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> if the students can't uh, can't see that discovery in action, uh, not not sure they'd want to uh, go down that road. So, now more about uh, about science. Uh, we've got uh, holistic research or quackery. It's being asked right now. Uh, Aberdeen's government governance and nominations committee is considering whether to establish a chair in integrative healthcare and management uh, to be funded primarily by an anthropological clinic. Uh, anthro. I'm yeah, happy yeah. that you get the um, difficult words today. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, anthropological uh, clinic. For, for example, uh, no, anthropo anthroposophical. anthroposophical. There we go. Anth yeah. that's, uh, there we go. One example, do we need to do some uh, adaptive learning here myself. Uh, one example for anthroposophical medicine is the use of mistletoe to treat cancer, which is based on the observation that, like cancer, mistletoe is a parasitic growth that eventually kills its hosts. Uh, describing an anthroposophical medicine as pure crackery, though, quackery, though, uh, one member of the committee said there's no robust evidence for its effectiveness, with some reports suggesting that mistletoe treatment offered considerable potential for harm. That's over on Inside Higher Ed. And, uh, 
really though I think the the question becomes you know how do scarce funds get mm-hmm. allocated and who makes a decision on on curriculum and this this we see this with uh, creation versus evolution we see this with you know a, a lot of fields that have their detractors and have their um, proponents uh, so I don't know I don't know about mistletoe when if if hopefully I don't get cancer but I, I think I'd rather have just some chemo uh, but uh, yeah. you know yeah, it, it, lots of these things start as what hopefully we see as quackery and. Better. Yeah. I, I hope not, yeah. But uh, anyway, I can go to Aberdeen if I want to find out about how uh, to use mistletoe for it. But I don't expect this uh, choice of uh, words and phrasing from anybody else than uh, inside higher ed. So. <laughs> no, very true. <laughs> they live up to, <laughs> to, their, to their aim. Oh, All absolutely. Right, um, a story from uh, the Brookings uh, Institute um, and on, on how blogs, social media, and video games improve education. And Brookings released a new paper covering the impact of social media and games in education. According to the report, the appearance of collaboration tools such as blogs, wikis, social media, and uh, video games has altered, uh, altered the way individuals and organizations relate to one another. Alan Daly at the University of California at San Diego uh, predicts that education innovation, quote, will shift away from experts and capacity building to focus on networks, and that is that uh, education, second quote, is moving away from large-scale prescriptive approaches to more individualized, tailored, differentiated approaches. Yeah, we can only hope uh, for yeah. that, but um, in my use of uh, social media, uh, or I hope at least, uh, that has been the case uh, for quite some time. And uh, <laughs> also uh, the colleagues and people um, in education, uh, I like uh, to exchange on social media with uh, do it the same way. <laughs> they do. I think it's a real shift for, for the, the mainstream teacher, though, to, yeah. uh, again, get away from the stage on the stage kind of thing and allow uh, the resources that we have to, to, to let students build themselves and, and to this uh, the idea of adaptive learning, gaming-based learning. Uh, not an easy thing for the average uh, sort of traditional teacher uh, to, to get their heads around. So, Well, that closes this episode of ENT. You'll find all the links to the articles we covered on EduQuest. Just go to eduquest.com slash ENT5, the number 5. Uh, also follow Ed News Ticker on Twitter, at Ed News Ticker, just to stay updated during the week. ENT will be back next Wednesday. Until then, have a great weekend, everyone. Enjoy your weekend, everyone.